Hey there, welcome to this 5 minutes tech tip from K21 Academy. My name is Atul Kumar and in this short video we are going to look at Oracle Access Manager architecture. So Oracle Access Manager is part of Oracle's identity and access management suite and a recommended single sign-on solution for both Oracle and non-Oracle products. As the name suggests single sign-on means you sign on only once and then you access all the other applications without being prompted again for username and password. So this part here represents Oracle Access Manager. Oracle Access Manager is deployed on a WebLogic domain and WebLogic domain consists of an admin server and managed server. So on the admin server, you have Oracle Access Manager console deployed. That is a graphical user interface to manage Oracle Access Manager. And the managed server, which is OAM, managed server is where actual authentication and single sign-on happens. Right hand side is the database where it stores all the policies, which are nothing but rules governing how a particular URL is protected. So these two parts are Oracle Access Manager. This is the application that you're trying to protect. It could be eBusiness Suite, it could be Java application, dot, .NET application, or any application that you want to protect via this single sign-on solution. Then you have User Store, which is an enterprise-wide or enterprise-scale LDAP server, something similar to Microsoft Active Directory, or Oracle Internet Directory, Oracle Unified Directory, or third-party LDAP server. By default, Oracle Access Manager comes with its own LDAP server, which is WebLogic's embedded LDAP server. So then later in an enterprise deployment or configuration and deployment of Oracle Access Manager, you repoint this Oracle Access Manager from its own embedded LDAP server to an external LDAP server like AD or OID or OUD. Now this block here represents the application that you're trying to protect or configure single sign-on against. And this is just one application, but you can have number of applications like that. So you put a web server in front of the application working as a reverse proxy. And on this web server, you put a policy enforcement point or a gatekeeper called webgate. Now, role of this webgate is that any request that comes to web server, the webgate will collect this URL, take it to the Oracle Access Manager and ask Oracle Access Manager what authentication mechanism to forward user to, which means what login page user should be redirected to. And once user enters their pass username and password, they will be submitted to the Oracle Access Manager. Oracle Access Manager will collect this username and password, submit it to the LDAP server. LDAP server will validate these user ID and password. And on successful authentication, a session will be created into Oracle Access Manager. Oracle Access Manager will then forward or re return re user back to the web gate and web server with an authenticated user ID. The web server will then forward that request to the application with an authenticated user ID. When application receives this authenticated user ID, there'll be no password at this stage, just a authenticated user ID, and then application will create its own session related to that user. And since after that, application can be accessed by the user as long as the single sign-on cookie or Oracle Access Manager cookie is valid or someone has not terminated, terminated user session from Oracle Access Manager or user has not explicitly logged out from the Oracle Access Manager application or the application itself. So from a component or from architecture point of view, there's a Oracle Access Manager database that stores policy and metadata for OAM. Then you have LDAP store in which you have users and groups and you configure these external LDAP server 
with Oracle Access Manager and that I'm going to cover in my other five minutes tech tip in future. Then you have Oracle Access Manager WebLogic domain that has a admin server and a managed server where this managed server is one which does authentication and single sign-on application or does the single sign-on. Then you have web server and this web server will have a web gate which will act as a policy enforcement point and this web server will act as a proxy for this application. So this is all in a nutshell about Oracle Access Manager architecture and I know it's a very high level overview and it's almost impossible to cover entire architecture within five minutes but I've tried to do as much as possible within those five minutes. Now if you're watching this video anywhere outside K21 Academy blog and you still have any question related to architecture of Oracle Access Manager or anything related to Oracle Access Manager go to k21academy.com forward slash OAM03 and leave your question in a comment section and I'll definitely respond. Well, that's it from me, Atul Kumar, on this Oracle Access Manager topic. Now, if you have enjoyed this video and you would like us to cover more five minutes tech tip like these, then leave a comment below in this video wherever you're watching this video and we'll keep adding more and more videos like these. That's it from me for now.